Okay, part three here of RET screen. Now let's take a look at what specific type of solar hot water collector I wish to use. So I'm going to first click in here and go glazed or evacuated tube. So we're going to look at the various types. And then I'm going to click the product database. For those of you that are going to take some classes with me, I'm going to use, and what we have on our campus here, Stiebel Eltron. And there's a crud of big old manufacturers here. So we got the Stiebel Eltron. Those are the types of flat plate collectors that we have. And then I can choose, it's the Sol 25 Plus. And then I'm going to click OK. And that's going to import into here the various parameters of how much energy coefficients and solar collection and all that that we have. And if you notice right here, Red Screen is recommending that in order for me to really effectively get this for the 180 gallons of water, it recommends that the number of collectors that I have is three. So I'm going to select three. Now, miscellaneous losses. There are quite a few videos out there already, and I'll have links to those as well. But miscellaneous losses. You know, those guys are saying that it's 2% per collector. So in this case, it would be 6%. I'm going to err on the side of high. I like to err a little bit high on miscellaneous losses. I'm going to go with the 6%. If you really want to realistically do it, you could leave her at 4 for right now. And then what we'll have to do is eventually use this miscellaneous losses. We're going to have to include the other losses that are in the system. So you can place it in two locations. I would recommend that you place your miscellaneous losses of shading and otherwise. So if I'm facing due south, which is right here, and I have absolutely no trees, no shading effect, Effect, then I could probably just do a total percentage of about 4%. Now let's say I have a total net shading over these thermal modules and we're looking at somewhere near 10-15% of shading. Then I'm going to want to include that right here. I'm going to want to make this say then 14 to 10% of shading plus the 4% of miscellaneous loss. But for right now we're not going to spend a big chunk of our change just to put in some inefficient systems. Alright so that's what we've got. So let's look at the balance of system. Is there going to be a storage tank? Yes. Let's change this to gallons per square foot and we're going to leave this at one because we're in the central region we're going to want to have a setup that will only store what we need now there's a few things that are going on here what they're saying is in order for us to have this we need to have 180 gallons of storage or utilizing 180 gallons of hot water a day now what this thing is doing for us though is the number of collectors has now gone up and it's been changed. So now let's go back to four. That brings me back to 117 gallons. That's only going to cover about 52%. So let's go up a little bit. Let's make it six. Now I have 140 gallons. So a good rule of thumb would be to try to get your number of collectors to the storage sampling size to give you a more realistic value of offloading. This is what solar fraction is, the percentage of the sun in the solar heat system that we're going to use to heat heat this water. So how much is going to be run by say the natural gas or electric hot water and how much is going to be coming off of the solar thermal systems. I have a total of six modules here. Then I have a miscellaneous loss of four and then I've got a storage case of 167 but notice I need 180. You could conceivably move this to seven if we had room. Let's see it. Now it goes to 195 and I've got about a 73 percent delivery of systems. Is there a heat exchanger in this case? Yes there is. What's the percentage of losses of the heat exchanger efficiency? Let's leave that as high as 90. Let's leave that high. I mean, that'll be fine. That may be a touch on the high side, but, you know, I think we're going to be fine. There are miscellaneous losses in this case. Let's just say we don't do a good enough shielding of pipes coming from the solar thermal system into the collectors. And now here, this guy right here, we want to change it from watts per meter square to watts per foot square. Now we want to do 0.5 watts per square foot. That's how much it costs to us electrically to run that pump to move that water from one point to the other. And then we want to look at how much our electrical rate is. In central Illinois, we know we're paying about 11 cents a kilowatt hour. So there we go. So now, just about got this done. Now let's take a look at the heating systems. Now both of them are going to use natural gas. So let's convert that to natural gas into therms and natural gas into therms because our gas bills here in central Illinois are based upon therms. Let's leave this both at 80%. The 
seasonal efficiency is between how much of the cold water comes in. And remember on the page one, so we said that, all right, the water coming in is 43 degrees in the wintertime, 61 degrees in the summer. And then we've got storage. We've got some other things, you know, other storage costs. You know, is it in a cold, unheated basement? In this case, at Shelbourne, it's in a nice heated boiler room where it's not going to dip below 75 degrees year round. That boiler really runs all year. Even though it's not making any heat per se for the summer months, it's in a standby and it's a real old system. So there's some heat there. Currently in Illinois, we're paying, I'm going to go real high, 52 cents a therm. Now that's going to change and their parameters later are going to change. And then I'm going to say seasonal efficiency. I don't know what that value is, so we'll leave that go. Now we're, we're starting to get some cases and we'll move forward from there. And hopefully I can bring this energy save cost and proposition up. I'll be right back on the next part to discuss all that.